In the realm of paying attention to detail, one of the things I noticed about Randy's program is the amount of drills he creates that allow the athletes to practice isolated parts of the vault. This allows them to repeat that portion many times without having to do an entire vault, giving them a better chance of practicing it right. This takes us back to the ratio of positive to negative repetitions. It's easier to get feedback and make corrections when the drill is repeated in the isolated state. His program utilizes equipment from the circus to Home Depot to enable the athletes to execute these drills. Here he uses a wheeled pull-up bar that allows the vaulters to practice the jump up needed at the takeoff to maximize the transfer of energy to the pole. Next the jumpers practice swinging on a trapeze, swinging their legs up with the timing they would use in a natural vault. Air sense is critical for a vaulter. Without it, the vaulter can't tell where he is in the jump and loses his timing for executing the next phase. Randy's program contains a large amount of work with gymnastic tumbling and apparatus drills. This develops that air sense and the strength that comes from manipulating and lifting your own body weight. The amount of separate drills for the pole plant is a good illustration of how specific the drills get in order to make sure each element of the scripted behavior can be practiced to perfection. There's the left hand drill, the walk through drill, the wall plant drill, the wrist flip drill, the and a uh drill, one step, one step coach assist, and the one arm jog through, among many others. Each of these drills and more are only one small part of the complex action in the plant and the takeoff. But by separating them, each part can be perfected and then joined together in the correct firing order. Randy's group does the same thing with the running portion of the vault. You can see here how they are practicing the precise movements the legs should make with each stride. Kids have been running all their lives, but that doesn't mean the form they have in their running is correct and efficient. They have to be retrained to run with better efficiency for greater speed and to avoid injuries. So Randy will break down each part of the stride, the length, the frequency, rhythm, angles of the knee, ankle and thigh, body posture, arm movements, power strokes, and an understanding of which muscles should be contracting when. We're gonna go into twos, two power strides. Let your momentum carry you through your normal stride for two normal speed strides or fast strides. And then you're going to emphasize the quick by really shortening up your feet and go left, left. So it's 